Good day everyone! In this second quarter module in PE, we will be discussing all about social dancing and dance mixers, specifically the injuries that dancers might have and how to give first aid to these injuries. This lesson will cover the last module of PE this second quarter. Dance is a physically demanding activity. Dancers perform repetitive movements for several hours a day. Studies have shown that dancing 5 hours a day or longer leads to an increased risk of stress fractures and other injuries. This is why it is also important to know the first aid for injuries and emergencies in physical activity in dance settings. And this will be the main topic for the last module in PE this second quarter. Dance may look effortless, but it requires a lot of strength, flexibility, and stamina. It also comes with a high risk of injuries. Whether you are a dancer, the parent of a dancer, or a dance teacher, you should be aware of the most common dance injuries and learn how to avoid them. On top of the intensive training, many dancers get little time to recover between the sessions and have no off-season. Restrictive diets and unhealthy body weights may also contribute to dance injuries. Let's talk about first aid. First aid is an immediate and temporary care given to a person who has been injured or suddenly taken ill. It includes self-help and home care if medical assistance is not available or delayed. Here are some of the objectives of first aid. First is, this will alleviate suffering. Second, this will prevent added or further injury or danger. And last one, this can prolong life of the victim. Here are some common injuries that a dancer might experience during dancing or training. First one is sprain. This is caused by torn fibers in a ligament. Swelling and bruising are some signs and symptoms. Second is strain. This is a twist, pull, or tear of a muscle or tendon, which is a cord tissue connecting muscle to a bone. Third is fracture. This is a break in the bone that can occur from either a quick, one-time injury to the bone, acute fracture, or from repeated stress to the bone over time, which is called stress fracture. Last one is dislocation. Happens when two bones that come together to form a joint become separated. The joint is described as dislocated. How will we give first aid to these common injuries? If you've ever hurt your ankle or had another type of sprain or strain, chances are your doctor recommended rest, ice, compression, and elevation, or what we call RICE method, as one of your first treatments. The RICE method is a simple self-care technique that helps reduce swelling, ease pain, and speed up healing. You can treat minor injuries with the RICE method at home. You might try it if you have an aching knee, ankle, or wrist after playing sports. If you have pain or swelling that gets worse or doesn't go away, see a doctor. RICE is an acronym that stands for Rest, Ice, Compression, and Elevation. First is rest. The injured part should be rested. Avoid any activity that causes pain or makes it worse. Use crutches if the leg, foot, or ankle is injured. Support an injured wrist, arm, or shoulder with a sling. Next is ice. Ice is an excellent anti-inflammatory and reduces swelling and pain. Apply an ice pack or cold compress for 10 to 15 minutes. Protect your skin with a thin cloth. Next is compression. Compression also reduces swelling. 
use elastic bandages for at least two days. Check that the bandage is snug but not too tight. Take the bandage off at night. Last one is elevation. Elevation drains fluids from injured tissues. Try to keep the injured area at above the level of your heart. And that is how you do the RISE method. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And that sums up all the lessons for all the PE modules this second quarter. Just remember, first aid is an important tool in quickly responding to accidents to ensure that injuries can be efficiently and promptly dealt with before a trained medical professional arrives to administer more specialized treatment. This time, I will show you the activities you need to do in PE Module 3. After watching this video, you can go ahead and answer these activities. As always, you can answer these activities online in the given links or you can write an answer sheet. If you choose to answer online, no need to do an answer sheet. If you cannot answer online, it's okay. Just write your answers in a paper, take a picture of it, and send it to me through chat. That will be all for today. Thank you for listening and see you next week.